again to Fowl Farm. Today we are going to look at the insect side of the farm. We have two types of insects we are keeping here. One is the stingless bees and the other one is the black soldier fly. Uh, the scientific name of black soldier fly is Amechia illucent and um, that's what we are going to discuss today. Why is it called black soldier fly? Well, it's black and uh, maybe because it looks uh, rather aggressive um, maybe that's why it was called a soldier. Yeah, the black soldier fly, or uh, like I said, the Matia illusans, belong to the group of uh, flies. Uh, we'll not be very scientific, so let us just say they belong to the group of flies. So that group called flies have different phases of their lives. We start with the adult, egg, larva, and pupa. The pupa then transforms itself into an adult. And the transformation is so dramatic that actually scientists call it metamorphosis. It's actually a total change of form and shape. So the adult black soldier fly is unique. If you compare it, for example, to the other domestic fly, the adult black soldier fly has only one role in life, to reproduce. It does not have a digestive system, it doesn't have what we call alimentary system, and therefore it cannot eat. So it can't live very long. The lifespan is only seven days. And if you improve that by certain things we'll discuss later, it can prolong that life by another one a week. The adult lays eggs between 900 to 1400 eggs, depending on whether you do certain things. The egg then hatches into what is called a larva, what most people will call a maggot. That larva is the most active phase of this fly. This is the phase which gives it the use for which it is well known, because the larval phase is known for its ferocious eating. It eats, it eats the same body weight as, as itself. So if it is laying, let's say, two grams, by evening it will, have, it will have eaten two grams of food. If it is five grams, by evening from morning the following day it will have eaten five grams. So it eats so much. It's like if you are a human being of 80 kilos, you will have eaten 80 kilos by the following day. That, that, is, that is a lot. And that is where we use it for the managing waste. The pupal stage is the late stage. It is like the larval stage, but the last part of it, because it doesn't really change in external form. It looks the same, but what happens is it becomes dormant. The shape stays the same, but the color changes. It comes from white, becomes dark. And once you achieve that dark phase, it is like it is paralyzed. In fact, most people, when you look at it, they think that the fly, the larva is dead. It isn't, it's just hibernating. And during that phase of hibernating, that is when this severe change occurs, where now it changes from a maggot into a fly. And that is now what we said earlier on, it's called metamorphosis. When we talk about uh, black soldier fly, there are many people who wonder the name is strange, they have never heard of it, of course. And so they assume that this is a very exotic organism which we are probably introducing in our ecosystem. But the black soldier fly is actually an organism which has been living with us for years, thousands of years. And many times you'll see the larvae, and most of us don't know. A lot of the times, unless you know, you'll confuse the black soldier fly maggot or larvae for a domestic fly larvae. The domestic fly larvae are much smaller and cylindrical in shape. The black soldier fly larvae is totally different and you'll see it a lot in things which are rotting, especially like dead animals or things like that. The adult fly, that is, the one which actually flies, is very docile. The fact that it doesn't need to eat therefore means its main focus is just to look for a place to lay the eggs so that the larvae can get a place to eat when the eggs hatch. And then even when it lays its eggs, it hides. 
So this is a fly you rarely see. But we discovered this quite a lot when, for example, we try to lay traps. There are traps which we lay, which we'll discuss later. And you actually discover you have quite a lot of it in our environment. So it is rather difficult for such a docile and shy insect to keep it. So you have to find a way of keeping them in a controlled way. And that is why we have the greenhouse. The greenhouse basically helps us to get them in a confined space so that we can be able to then control how they will uh, lay their eggs and to know and even to predict what numbers we can even get and the volumes we can get. So that is why we have a greenhouse.